gonna get oily in here, sorry guys. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Claire Saffitz. We are in my still yet to be built kitchen in a cabin in the Hudson Valley. And that's okay, it's not stopping me from doing some great baking up here. And today I'm gonna show you a recipe that is perfect for Hanukkah, traditionally consumed around the holiday, and it's for jelly donuts. And it's gonna be super delicious. I am using as a base for the jelly donut my brioche recipe from Dessert Person. So brioche is a very eggy, very buttery, light bread, and it makes a fantastic donut. So it's a yeasted donut, and then we're gonna fill them with some jelly and cover it with a little flavored sugar. And it's just gonna be a really, I think, well-balanced, incredibly delicious, soft, pillowy, fried piece of dough with jelly in it. So we eat fried foods at Hanukkah to celebrate the miracle of the oil that lasted for eight days. I mean, it could be really anything fried, but it's a great opportunity to use up some like jam that's been sitting in the back of your fridge and you can like do all different flavors and customize. But I'm just gonna show you starting with the dough so you have a really solid base for any kind of donut you wanna make. I have made brioche by hand. You can do it by hand, but it is tedious because you will be mixing for a long time. So it's just something that's much easier to do in a stand mixer where you can just turn the mixer on low, walk away, come back. It's really hands off. It's not hard, it just takes a little bit of time and is, you'll just be much happier to let the mixer do it. So in addition to the mixer, I have a deep fry or candy thermometer. You don't need this. You can also just use an instant read thermometer and kind of be monitoring the oil. But this is just so we know what temperature the oil is for frying the donuts. So for filling the donuts, it's useful to have a star pastry chip like this to help you poke into the donut and fill the center with the jelly. So that's really helpful. A pastry bag as well. You could use like a Ziploc bag or something like that. Uh, a big wide pot or Dutch oven for frying. Oh, and a cutter. <laughs> you need one of these for cutting out the donuts. If you don't have a cutter, you can just use a glass. You cut down. Because we're not making holes in the donuts. They're just gonna be these little delicious pillows. So for the brioche, I have two sticks of butter, room temp, active dry yeast, six large eggs, four cups of flour, a quarter cup of granulated sugar, quarter cup of milk, two teaspoons kosher salt. Then for frying, I have vegetable oil. And for finishing the donuts, I have some jam. I decided to use sour cherry preserves. I love cherry preserves. And then for coating the donuts, I was gonna do a sugar coating. And so I have some granulated sugar and I was gonna make a little cardamom sugar. So I have ground cardamom, because I thought the cherry and cardamom combination would be really nice. I know this yeast is alive. I use this jar. I, I do not have to do this step of proofing the yeast, which is dissolving in some warm liquid and looking for bubbling. So I'm just really confident about it. And it's a perfectly acceptable step to skip and just add it right to the dough. And I'll talk about why I know I can do that. Move this off to the side. So I'm gonna start with a teaspoon of active dry yeast right in the mixing bowl. Then I'm gonna add my flour I have a little bit of excess flour right here. This is what we call bench flour, just because I might have to add a little bit. So when you're making anything with yeast and, and bread dough, you always need to sort of make some slight adjustments. It's never exactly the right proportion. You know, it depends on like your flour and hydration and everything. So I always keep a little flour to adjust if needed. Then I'm gonna add my salt. It's actually helpful to add your salt in a way that it's not touching the yeast because the salt will inhibit the yeast action. Then the sugar, it makes it very lightly sweet, but it is not an overly sweet dough. And what's great about brioche is it's super versatile. So it can go sweet and savory. So mix that together. Then I'm gonna make a well in the center, meaning like a little hole. So then into the well, I add my liquid ingredients, which are my six eggs and my quarter cup of milk. So everything is room temp, but if your ingredients are slightly cold, that's actually a good thing, and I'll explain why. I would say cold room temp is ideal. Once you add all your liquid ingredients, you're gonna to start to mix. So I'm gonna turn the mixer on the lowest speed. And the key to a brioche that is extremely light, but also bready and has that kind of like pull apart texture with a silkiness to it, is a very long, slow mix. And that's because we have a lot of ingredients that are adding richness, but we also need to develop a lot of gluten. And that's gonna give us this very airy kind of texture. 
This mixes for so long that the friction of the dough against the side of the bowl and the hook actually warms it up. So we just keep it on low and let it go and then I'll come back and check on it every few minutes to see how it's developing and then we'll add the butter. So let's take a look at the dough so far. You can see that it's come together and it's, it's getting smooth. It's a little bit tacky and it's still clinging to the sides of the bowl. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to scrape it down. We're probably halfway through mixing at this point and I'm just scraping down the sides and I'm gonna add some additional flour because the dough is quite loose and it does need to come together a little bit more so that it's fully pulling away from the sides and I don't want it to be quite so tacky. I'll start with maybe two tablespoons of flour and then I'll continue to add as needed. And what I wanna see is the dough gathered around the hook and it might still be clinging to the very bottom of the bowl, but it will pull away from the sides. So here's my little extra flour and you can just eyeball this. So that was probably two tablespoons. This probably needs another five minutes. But the dough is pulling away from the sides and just is a little bit stuck on the bottom. And I haven't gone above a two on my mixer. So it's still at this point on like low, medium, low, but it's looking good. And I'll show you an example sort of of what we're looking for. So if you pinch off a piece, for anyone that's familiar with sourdough bread baking, you might, under, you might know this um, sort of concept or term called window pane for dough. And basically what you want to do is be able to stretch the dough in a way that it creates like a thin film through which light can pass. And that is an indication that you have developed strength in the dough. So you don't want to stretch quickly. You want to let the dough use its own weight to thin out. And there's sort of different degrees of window pane, but we are basically at a window pane right now. So it's not tearing, but you can see like, if I do this, see that? Yeah. yeah. We're getting this really thin sheet of dough that has sort of a little bit of, it's a little bit translucent. So I have my two sticks of butter that I cut each into four. So it's like two tablespoon size pieces. And I'm gonna start by just adding them one piece at a time to the mixer. And I'm still gonna keep it on low. And this part just takes time. And I wanna just let it mix until I see the butter fully incorporate into the dough. And I'm just gonna wait until each portion absorbs before I add the next one. This part could take you 10 minutes or so, especially when you're just on a low speed like this. This is why you want a mixer. This part is not that fun to do by hand at all. I am ready to add my last portion of butter. So in it goes. I am now gonna let this dough continue to mix, keeping it on low the whole time. And I'm just gonna wait until it completely comes together, gather around the hook, not sticking to the sides. And you can give it a scrape periodically, but the whole thing just needs a little bit of time to develop. And then I'll show you how to set it up for the first rise. Then we'll move into forming our jelly donuts. I'm gonna scrape the dough out onto the work surface. You don't need any flour or anything. So go ahead and either use a separate clean bowl or clean out the mixing bowl. So to form something into a ball, it's helpful to have this tool. You could just kind of use your hands. And really what you're doing is dragging the dough across the surface and tucking the sides underneath. And that is kind of stretching the very surface of the dough around itself. And you get this sort of nice smooth ball. And this brioche looks great. You can almost like see the gluten strands. It's not sticky at all. So this has to rise and then we chill brioche. It's always recommended to handle brioche dough cold. It's just so much easier to form into whatever you're making, whether it's loaves or donuts or whatever. So I'm gonna put this back into the bowl. So just lift it up to the scraper, put it in rounded side up. I'm gonna cover it, let it rise, stick it in the fridge, and then I actually have a swap from last night. And sometimes what you can do if you wanna make it ahead of time, this dough is pretty cool to the touch. If you feel like your dough is getting a little warm, maybe it's warm in your kitchen, or you just think it was in the mixer for so long that it started to warm up, you can just put it directly in the fridge and the dough will have enough heat in it to sort of rise in the fridge as it cools down. So that's what I did last night. I have one that did an overnight rise. I have a brioche dough that I made last night. It rose very beautifully in the fridge and it's cold. So I'm ready to start forming the donuts and then they go for a second rise after I form them. And I think what I'm gonna do is very lightly grease the parchment just to prevent any sticking. It shouldn't, it really should not stick because there's butter in the dough, they're going into oil, but just to make sure. I'm just gonna brush a very, very thin layer of oil. And then for forming the donuts, besides the cutter, I have a little bit of bench flour and a rolling pin. This is 
about doubled in size. So, and now it's super cold. You can see how firm it is and it's filled with air. So I'm gonna lightly flour my surface and go ahead and scrape the dough out of the bowl. So now I'm gonna give a dust of flour on top and then just roll it out. This is gonna knock out some of the gas that has built up. And what happens with active dry yeast and the two rises is that the, the forming process, whether you're making a loaf or donuts, is you are bringing the yeast into contact with like new parts of the flour. And so you're kind of refeeding it and reactivating it. And then it goes into a second rise. So I think I'm gonna go for something that's like about maybe three quarters of an inch thick. It's cool in here, which is great for working with brioche. In a warm kitchen, you're gonna to wanna to roll pretty quickly before it starts to really get too sticky to handle. Whenever you're cutting anything out of a dough, you always wanna space the cutouts as close together as possible because it just doesn't really work very well to like re-roll, especially for donuts and a yeasted dough like this. I'm gonna just try to get them as close together as possible. So I'm sort of planning out my configuration. I hate when you like get to the end and you have a space that's almost big enough, but not quite big enough. It's very satisfying when you can fit really like the maximum number. You're gonna cut straight down. Sometimes I give it a little wiggle just to loosen everything and then lift back up. And then transfer, it, whether it sticks to the surface or the cutter, you're just gonna transfer one at a time to the grease parchment. And I use very little flour, that's important here. If you have any excess flour, you wanna brush it off. Harris, you mean this is your debut? <laughs> yeah, Harris. What? This is your debut? Oh, is this my intro? <laughs> what? I gotta live. I live here. I'm gonna take some of the larger pieces and just kinda of re-roll. Try to get two more donuts out of here. You can see that this dough, see how it's kind of sh shrinking and like contracting? That's just because we've worked this dough and we developed a lot of gluten to sort of give this brioche structure. And so it just becomes a little bit harder the second time around to get something even and looking as good as the first. So can I fit two on there? We'll see, these might, well, they'll turn out. They're just not gonna be, they're maybe gonna be a little harder to fill. I'm gonna cover this tray and these are gonna proof at room temperature until they're puffed. And we're gonna do something called the poke test to see if they have filled with enough gas to then be ready to fry. So while these are proofing, I'm gonna show you how to set up your fry station with your thermometer and your oil and everything. And I'm gonna get my cardamom sugar ready and my jelly ready for filling. I'm just gonna basically coat one side of the donut. That's gonna be like the top and a little bit of cardamom sugar. So I have probably like a half cup of granulated sugar here and I'll do, cardamom is really strong. So maybe I'll do a half teaspoon. Cardamom is just like really floral and can be kind of overpowering. So stir that up and then this will be basically when the donuts are hot out of the fryer, I'll turn them over and just coat them on one side, you know, directly in the container before I fill them. And then a little pinch of salt doesn't hurt. So that's that. Then I'm gonna fill my pastry bag with the jam. I have two different types of star tips here. It kind of depends on like, if you have like big pieces of whole fruit in your jam or jelly. In jelly, there's no whole pieces, so you can use something a little bit smaller like this. So I might go a little larger. Let's see what we got in here. So I have some pieces of fruit, so I'm gonna do a slightly larger pastry tip and just go ahead and snip the corner off of the bag. Go ahead and put the pastry tip inside. And then you want to really work the pastry tip into the very bottom of the bag so that like the tension of the end of the pastry bag holds it in place. Sometimes you need two hands to fill a pastry bag so you can kind of stand it up in a pine container or pine glass. You could do multiple flavors, obviously. You could fill the bag side by side with two different flavors if you wanted. Now what I'm seeing a lot more of in stores are like fruit spreads, so things that have lower sugar content than jam and jelly, which would also be really nice. You could do like any kind of compote, apple butter, pear butter, that kind of thing. 
I'm gonna go ahead and leave that in my glass. I have my Dutch oven over here. So I'll fill it up maybe a third of the way. And this is just vegetable oil. I'm gonna heat the oil to 350 for frying. And I'm gonna turn this on. And I'll just keep an eye on the thermometer. Sometimes I like give it a stir with a wooden spoon or a heat-proof spatula just to sort of equalize the temp and make sure that the thermometer is accurate. Right now I have it on high, but what I'll do is as it climbs up, I'll turn it down um, and try to get it right at the point where we can maintain that 350. These look proof. I'm gonna test them and show you how to know if your donuts are ready for frying. These two little wonky ones, those were the re-roll, so I'm not surprised, but they look really good. They're puffed. I see some separation where the cutter kind of made that line, like the little waste. So I'm gonna go ahead and poke them. This is called the poke test. And what I wanna see is the dough spring back and leave a very slight indentation. So that's how I know that they have built up enough gas for frying. So I see I poke, it springs back and leaves a slight indentation. So I'm ready for frying and conveniently, my oil just passed 340, so I think I'm at a good place to start frying. So I'm gonna leave my donuts right here. I have my oil. Then right here, I have a little kind of resting spot for the donuts when they come off. I just have a rack set over some paper towels. This is a Danish dough hook that my mom gave me um, that I never use, but is weirdly like a great thing for turning donuts. So my oil is at a good point, so I'm gonna start adding them to the oil. And you wanna leave some room for them to bob around, so I think I'll probably be able to comfortably fit maybe four at a time. I'm gonna put them in one by one. They're gonna fry for a couple minutes on each side, and when they're really golden brown, I let them go pretty dark, because I like a really flavorful donut. Turn them over, fry on the second side, then let them drain on the rack. And then repeat until you've fried all of them. Okay, so this is what I really wanna see. I think that the, the sign of a really well-proofed donut is that you get this like Saturn's rings kind of waste around the sides. Because if, if you get a darker ring around the sides, that means it's been sitting, it's like heavy and it's been sitting in the oil and it hasn't proofed long enough. So that's what I want to see. So this is really just taking a minute or two on each side. And just let them drain. So while these finish, I'm going to coat the still warm donuts in my cardamom sugar. The equator of the donuts is a little bit soft. You just don't want to squish them because they're really light. I just took the last donuts out. I did three batches to, ah, to fry all 12. And I want to just go these, these poor <laughs> crazy ones. Okay, I'm gonna just coat, coat the last donuts while they're still hot in the cardamom sugar. These look great. I'm really happy with the proof and the amount of color on the donuts. Some are not exactly round, but that's okay. They look really good. And now I'm going to go ahead and fill them with the jelly. Generally how you fill a jelly donut is you go in from the side. So you see I have my little pale equator. I'm just gonna just puncture in and then squeeze. And you kind of have to go by feel for how much you're filling. I think I hit a blockage. Uh-oh. Hold please. What uh, Something's a little, I think it's a piece of cherry stuck in the piping bag. <laughs> Gross. Sorry. Okay. Maybe that's why they're jelly donuts and not jam donuts, because you got those pieces of fruit kind of in the way. There we go. I like when you can see the little, like, little keyhole of jelly. It's kind of hard to tell, like, how much jam you're really putting inside. So you kind of want to keep an eye on the pastry bag and have a sense of how much, you know, maybe you want, like, a couple, a tablespoon or two in the inside. I don't want it to be, like, overfilled. You don't have to do jelly either. You could do pastry cream, and then you have like a cream-filled donut, chocolate or vanilla, coffee-flavored. And if you have big pieces of fruit, like I do, you could do what I did not do, which is either strain the jam, or you can also put a hand blender through it or a food processor or something to just kind of break it up a little. So I'm just gonna finish filling all of these, and then we're gonna eat them because I really think that donuts should be eaten while they're hot. We're gonna kind of take a look and see how filled they are. I'm gonna tear this one apart. And you can really see all of the like beautiful bready texture of the brioche. It looks so good. Wow. I really, I think it's a good amount of jam. It's like definitely generously filled, but not overwhelmed. I'm gonna taste it. Mm. 
Mm. I have to confess something. I oh, love donuts. Donuts are not my favorite treat of all time. Truthfully, I never had one that I liked. I think that they're overrated, but this donut, like warm with the jam, which is now slightly warm from the donut and the sugar, it's not too sweet, which I think is really important with something as rich as a donut. I love the cherry. The cardamom is really great, but of course you can customize, make it with any filling that you like, any flavor, sugar, do a glaze, do a like cream filling, totally up to you. So good, so fun to do um, with your family for Hanukkah or just for any reason. You don't have to be celebrating Hanukkah to make jelly donuts. So I hope you liked watching this episode of Dessert Person brought to you from our cabin, work in progress, but it's still fun to be up here. And thank you for watching and like and subscribe.